Thank you for downloading the Flixsters podcast. On this week's episode, they take her to the house and that's where it all goes, you know, just all goes crazy. So yeah, they, they eventually, you know, strap her to the bed and all that kind of stuff. And she's just, yeah, she's not leaving basically. Her parents are looking for her. Uh, you know, the police aren't really doing that much. And it is a bit of a sick film, the things that they do to her. You know, the movie's called The Little Things, but I think there are some big things that they kind of left out and that they should have kind of... Yes, so it finally is called No Way Home. And uh, that's an interesting one because many people... I think some people kind of guess it might be something like that. And uh, I think this is going to be really good as well. So yeah, great voice cast. Check out the trailer. It's coming out in March. So in about a couple of weeks, two, three weeks time on Amazon Prime. So go check it out. Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of The Flicksters. Thanks for joining us. Uh, We're going to be speaking movies for the next hour or so. We've got a new Denzel Washington movie that we're going to be speaking about. And also a uh, a monster movie that we uh, that Deval is going to be speaking about, and um, we are going to be spending a bit of time speaking about One Division. I want to kind of get through a little few things over there, and uh, apart from that, it's going to be the same usual show. We hope you enjoy it. We hope you're having a great time wherever you are, and uh, yeah, let's get on with the show. So, Deval, shout outs. Yeah, do you know what? Hmm. Shout outs every week are getting more and more exciting. You know, I am liking the interactions that the fellow Flicksters are putting out uh, (laughs) (laughs) on our social media platforms. Claude, Claude Cole, uh, he's on Facebook. He loves a bit of Facebook. If you go into Claude Cole's uh, Facebook page, you should see his his selfies. He loves the (laughs) selfie. (laughs) He loves the selfie. (laughs) But no, he shouted us out uh, about uh, Doctor Strange, One Division. He actually responded to the news of the... Spider-Man, which we'll talk about later, Spider-Man 3, yeah. uh, No Way Home. And uh, he was just talking about how Spider-Man 3 will be linked to, like, you know, One Division and, you know, what a multiverse and things like that. So let's see if that's the case when Spider-Man 3 is released in December. And uh, next shout-out goes to our very own Charlie Jai UK. Whoa. So I was on her show, Amplified, on Thursday, and uh, talking about different stuff, relationships, movies, all that kind of stuff. You can go out to her page, Charlie Jai UK, to find that out on Instagram. And uh, yeah, just giving her a shout out. Thank you for letting us, the Flicksters, you know, take over your your show uh, for the week. And uh, yeah, definitely uh, love that. Keep her listening to her show and also ours as well. Don't forget us. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Charlie, thank you for that. Uh, next shout out goes out to Zakrov, our very own Zakrov. You know what? We could literally shout out Zakrov every week. Every single week. Every single week he has movie recommendations. He's always talking about hidden gems and all sorts of stuff. He told us to watch a film. Uh, what's it called? This film is called uh, The 100 Foot Journey. So he mentioned that The 100 Foot Journey yep. is a really good film and worth a watch. So we're going to watch yeah, that one is. of these days and let you guys know. Have you seen yeah, it already? Def- I've seen it already, man. I watched oh. it. Yeah, this was back in, uh, yeah, this was back, uh, what, I think like about 2014, I think. This is when like we were mm. like, you know, back at, uh, you know, our injust days, man. So like, I was just like, okay. I think it was one of those days where I kind of skived off work and, like, you know, watched it and stuff. <laughs> so yeah, man. So um, <laughs> yeah, so no, great. Zakharov, yeah, good recommendation, Zakharov. We will definitely speak about that one. And you know what will be really great? Zakharov, come on, man, we're waiting. You know what? Get you on the show. We can, you know, talk about, you know, that movie or any other movie that you want. Yeah. Jump on board, I, man. I have, we're still I have waiting. invited him, actually. I think he will I be on, one of, on the show one of these days. Next shout out goes out to O'Shea PD. Uh, O'Shea PD gave us a massive shout out, added us to his stories on, on Flicksters. O'Shea PD, he's a, he's a, you know, he's a, he's a, he's one of those cool cats that yeah, like, he, he doesn't like every film, but <laughs> some films, <laughs> some films he likes and the films that he does like, trust me, you got to have a conversation with him. You the go classics. to his Instagram, have, have a, con- a, a conversation with him about those niche films, those old school 80s films and those hidden gems. He's the guy, he's the guy, mm-hmm. O'Shea PD. Exactly. Uh, last shout out goes out to uh, AL Media. AL Media uh, had a uh, talk uh, a few days ago about movies uh, and on the AL Media page on, uh, what's that new, Telegram, that's it, on Telegram, uh, they get to talk about different stuff, whether it's movies or, you know, finances or whatever it may be. Great page to follow, lots of interesting insights. 
for your whole wealth, uh, whole health and well-being, really as well. But yeah, another good page to go to AL Media, and those Brilliant. are the yeah, sweet man. shout outs. Fantastic, keep them coming in, folks, and obviously. Yeah, hit us up on uh, on your Insta, on Twitter, and on Facebook. We love it when you get in touch with us. And um, you know what? There's always someone there or the, on the other end to kind of you know you know uh, have that uh, conversation with you. All right, okay. Movie news now. Take it away with this one, man. Oh man. So you know we had a uh, we had the boys. The boys came out in 2019. That just wrecked everything when it came to superhero uh, TV shows and stuff like that. And do you know what? I, when I first saw this uh, sort of trailer, it's a teaser trailer, but it's more of a movie news kind of thing. So I put it in the movie news section. But it's, uh, yeah, this is actually to do with superheroes. And it's called Jupiter's Legacy. Jupiter's Legacy. We know Jupiter is the biggest planet in the solar, solar system, named after the sort of Roman god of the gods, uh, similarly to uh, Zeus, the Greek god of the gods. But yeah, this is, uh, the first, this is about the first generation of superheroes. Uh, and they've kept the world safe for nearly a century. But now their children must live up to the legacy of their parents, keeping the world safe. And we all know when it comes to superhero, you know, stuff, they don't always agree. And uh, we, we've not seen many superheroes having kids and stuff like that. But this is an interesting one because it just so, shows the generational, you know, shift in what superhero values may be. This one is looking like it's going to be R-rated as well. And it's meant to be released in uh, May, actually. So not too long to wait. But uh, you know very what? interesting one, dude. Looks, mm. looks so interesting. And the people behind it, Stephen S. DeKnight. I mean, that guy, yeah. he's been behind Spartacus. Exactly. So, I mean, that is it. That just tells you exactly what type of a show it's going to be. And you know what? It's funny that you should mention this one, right? Because I'm, there's a trailer that I'm going to speak about in our trailer section called Invincible. That's coming out on the competition. That's coming out on Amazon. And it's, oh. some, it's a bit similar. It's about superheroes. It's about the children of superheroes. So yeah, man, it's going to be, man, it's an interesting time. Now, this next piece of news, this is really, really kind of exciting. And we mentioned O'Shea PD earlier on. He's a big kind of like District 9 fan. I'm a big District 9 fan. You're a big District 9 fan. And I'm pretty sure there are other Flicksters out there who are District 9 fans. Directed by Neil Blomkamp, who's the, I think he's from South Africa. And yeah. uh, he made this kind of low budget, it doesn't look low budget though. That's the thing. It, but I think kind of the budget wasn't like huge. So there's low budget South African movie and uh, man, it's a, it's a sci-fi movie with a lot of heart and it's got this kind of like great central character in there. And uh, it talks about race. It talks about poverty and it kind of meshes all those things together in sci-fi. And you've got this great story. Now, that movie was made, geez, Deval, when was that movie made, man? I think it was 2009, wasn't it? A long time ago, put it this way. So a long time ago. <laughs> now, the news is that Neil Blomkamp, he's actually in talks to developing a, so that they're working on the script. He's working on the script. We're going to see a District 10. And oh my gosh, man, it's been such a long time. And um, my thing was, I was thinking about this the other day. I was like, come on, man, we're, we're seeing like, you know, for example, and I'm, I'm not shitting on Fast and the Furious. Well, I am a little bit, but like, you know, we see a Fast and Furious movie every single time. And I'm like, why is it not that we can't see a movie like District 10, like, you know, come out? And it just takes a long time for some of these movies to, to get made. But it's coming out, man. District 10 is going to be working upon. And hopefully over the next couple of years, we're going to see it. But that's great news, right, Deval? Because we want, we, we want to find out what happened to that character. Exactly. I think the, the character was left where he... He got infected and stuff, and mm. it was just a whole bunch of mayhem that sort of came out from from that from that region. But you're right; I think the the main message in the film is to do with like divide and class. Obviously, South Africa has a massive history with apartheid and things like that. So this kind of shone the light on that uh, on some of the sort of dark history of yeah, that man. country. And I wonder if District Nine will also, or, sorry, District Ten will still be in that country or if they may venture out to other countries we'll have to yeah. wait and see interesting point all right okay we'll keep you posted on that one now devad tell us about this now you 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 spoke about we well we've spoken about mortal kombat we know that there's the new mortal kombat movie that's coming out in april but tell us about this trailer yeah so oh, mortal kombat oh this trailer has done crazy crazy numbers we put it on our instagram facebook and all that kind of stuff and people were talking about it like crazy the red band 
uh, trailer and red band is when the trailer is like you know rated r and you know or 15 in the uk basically not for kids that's the trailer everyone wanted to watch because mortal kombat is known for its violence and bloodshed yeah. this trailer has done uh what it did a uh, 116 million views in the first week uh and i think it, it beat the first four day record which uh you know it's that's something that i mean but for it to hit that many views in such, such a short space of time is crazy. For a Red yeah. Band, uh, you know, trailer, previously the record was held by uh, Deadpool 2 and uh, I believe Logan as well. Logan was up there as well. So, yeah, yeah this is uh, this film hopefully will, you know, hopefully it'll be as good as a trailer. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. As the trailer seemed. Yeah. And just remind everyone, is that, is that, is that going to be coming on HBO Max? Yes, that's right, HBO Max. And I okay. think in some places it might be in the cinema as well. Yeah, like over here, over here it'll be in the cinema, and um, yeah, so they'll do kind of like a, a theatrical release in some places, and then they'll release it on HBO Max. So hopefully, yeah, we'll, we'll well, we'll yeah, we'll get to watch that one. And uh, if you haven't seen the trailer, go check it out. Now, this next piece of news we got to speak about this now. Just a couple of days ago, the official name of the next Spider-Man movie was released. And Deval and I, we've had so many conversations about this on the show and we've kind of been guessing, we've been kind of thinking, no, it could be this, it could be like, you know, this title, this title, that title, all different, different types of uh, titles. But finally, the new Spider-Man title, the new Spider-Man 3 title, Devado, what is it called? Let everyone know. Yes, so it finally is called No Way Home. And uh, that's an interesting one because many people... I think some people kind of guess it might be something like that because in Spider-Man Far From Home, at the end of it, he was kind of abandoned, isn't it? He was uh, yeah. outed by uh, Mysterio. Yeah. He's, you know, he's, uh, his secret identity was you know, sh- showed to the whole world through J. Jonah Jameson, and it seems like he's on the run. So maybe this means there's no way home for him in that respect. But also, we know Doctor Strange is going to show up, not sure how long for. But it could also mean that he may be multiversally lost. So maybe in, in that respect, there's no way home for him. So either way, it's going to be interesting. And just on that, I mean, yeah, it's going to be great. And like, if you go onto Tom Holland's um, Instagram page or, or Twitter page or whatever it is, they they, they kind of like um, the three lead actors, they, they kind of, uh, they come out of the office of the director and they like... They're obviously they're acting, but the way they ha- announce the whole movie is brilliant because the final shot is a board where all the different names of of you know what it could have been they're they're all on there and I'm like those are the names that we spoke about on the show as well so it was great that was good seeing that one but check this out um, just that kind of add a little asterisk onto that this is going to be Tom Holland's last outing as Spider Man. Uh, so this is what you had to say so Holland revealed so I've always said to them that if they want me back I'll be there in a heartbeat I've loved every minute of being a part of this amazing world it's changing my life for the better I'm so lucky to be here if they want me back I'll be there if they don't I will walk off into the sunset a very very happy person because it's been an amazing journey so his contract is uh, you know you know, over the, you know, at the end, basically after Spider-Man 3 and then beyond that we don't know I'm pretty sure he's going to sign on to do a uh, kind of appear in kind of like a maybe secret wars or like who knows or whatever but i mean i'm pretty sure he's gonna come back again for it right that's nonsense of course he's gonna come yeah i think that 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 statement that came out is just i don't know that's that's a nonsense statement he knows there's no way they're gonna say no to more spider-man money no way he's gonna do another couple spider-man films obviously he's gonna well i guess they'll he'll he'll age up and they'll just adapt the story but come on he's got to show up in avengers as well you know, he, yeah, he's going to do a few more. He's just saying that. But yeah, his, his next contract is going to be nice and chunky. He's going to make some money, trust me. Believe you me. He's only 24 years old, by the way. Uh, all right, okay, now let's speak about other Marvel news. Now, Loki, man. the Man, seriously, this, I'm really excited about Loki as well. And uh, there's all this chatter on the internet about WandaVision, kind of like... Um, you know, the effects of WandaVision can then affect Loki as well. And there's all this kind of uh, stuff going on about, you know, the TVA, the Time Variance Authority and how Loki might have to clean up uh, some stuff. But the big news there is Loki, the TV show, is landing on Disney Plus on the 11th of June. And that's one month after... Um, oh, no, it's a couple of months after Falcon and the Winter Soldier. So we've got... Um, yeah. Sorry, yeah, we've got Falcon and the Winter Soldier in March... 
uh, well, actually, that's just going to be what in about two or three weeks' time, Deval, is it? Exactly. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is brilliant. So by the time uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier ends, it's going to be a short little wait for then Loki to arrive yeah. on the 11th of June. And um, yeah, man, it's going to be another show which we're going to speak about on this show, another show that's going to be pff, cooking up loads of theories, like loads of possibilities. I can't wait for that one, man. That's going to be good. That, 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 that's one of the ones I was looking forward to the most, but obviously we'll talk about WandaVision in a second, but that's been crazy good. So I can, I just, I can just imagine, you know, they're just going to get better and better. So yeah, I can't wait. Yeah, can't wait for that one. All right, okay, now Dave Bautista, who's no stranger to big budget movies, and Mila Jovovich, uh, she's obviously been in, like, um, Resident Evil movies and pff, in countless others, and a movie that you're going to speak about later on. But those two are joining forces, Devaldo, for what? <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> so we've got a former wrestler and a former model. Uh, they're going to be joining up for George R. R. Martin's Lost Land. Ooh. So, yeah, Bautista... He's a bona fide actor now. In, in wrestling, in his wrestling days, he wasn't the best at, uh, at speaking. He actually used to have one of those like, managers that would always do the speaking for him. Oh, so it's actually no. quite good to see the progression. Yeah, he's done really, really well. And obviously Mila Jojovic uh, started out as a model. We saw her in uh, The Fifth Element in 1997, I think it yeah, is. Man. Uh, and uh, yeah, she's just gone on to do all kinds of, you know, a lot of her films are sort of crazy action kind of films. But yeah, she's, you know, she's done really, really well. Uh, obviously, we know George R. R. Martin from Game of Thrones and Lost Lands. It's a bit like that. It's a bit of fantasy. It's about a land where there's sorcerers and, you know, uh, sort of knights and things like that. In this one, uh, Mila Jojovic's character is going to be a sort of queen sorcerer of some sort. You would expect Batista to be the, you know, the, the sort of knight with the big sword and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, it's, all, it's going to be that kind of thing. So... This is, um, I'm not sure when it's gonna, actually going to come out. So we'll let you know when we get some more news on this and also more casting news. But from, you know, from George or R. R. Martin's uh, in, in involvement, it should hopefully be okay. So Yeah, yeah, it should, it should be interesting. And remember, we saw Dave Bautista in, um, in Blade Runner 2049. Yeah. You know, he kind of had this kind of, like a, uh, it was, a, you know, underrated performance. It was kind of like mm. a... It, it was good, man. I, I'm really impressed with kind of like how, you know, his trajectory and everything. So, yeah, it's mm. going to be really good. All right, we're going to finish up with movie news. We've kept it a bit brief because obviously we've got kind of other stuff to speak about. But check this one out. So, the Man of Steel, Superman, he is this amazing character. I've always loved uh, Superman, uh, you know, big fans of the Christopher Reeve movies. And Henry Cavill, I think he's a great Superman. But someone, so a person called Ta Nehisi Coates, has been uh, chosen to write a new Superman movie for Warner Brothers and it's going to be a reboot. And this is what Ta Nehisi said, had to say. I look forward to meaningfully adding to the legacy of America's most iconic mythic hero. And the movie is going to be produced under J.J. Abrahams' Bad Robot label. Now, I'm not sure if you remember, folks, but uh, he signed, J.J. Abrahams, his company signed a $500 million deal with uh, Warner Brothers to produce and develop TV shows, movies and games. So I think this is kind of, this comes under that whole banner. But the interesting thing is we don't know if Henry Cavill, the rumor is that Henry Cavill, you know, is probably likely to kind of, you know, come back and maybe do one more Superman movie. But there's also talk of Michael B. Jordan. The, you know, Michael B. Jordan, his name keeps popping up. And you know what? He could be a future version of, um, you know, he could be a version of Superman in the future, which is interesting. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard some rumors of that and seen some sort of, uh, you know, uh, uh, mock-up. Yeah, mock-up sort of pictures and, you know, art of him looking like Superman. He does look the part, yeah. Uh, but uh, we'll have to, I don't know. There's, there's been quite a few uh, conversations about having a black Superman and, some yeah. people are really with it. Some people are against it to say, you know, there's other characters uh, that are black in DC that, you know, just, you know, you can do them. There's no need to sort of shoehorn a black person into Superman just for the sake of it. But uh, yeah. yeah, interesting. See how it turns out. But I'm not, I've not got much faith in DC. Uh, <laughs> if, if they do well, they do well. But I don't really have much hope. So yeah, I don't know. Let's see. 
Less, yeah, we are, we're exactly, yeah. We know what their track record has been like. Uh, all right, okay, now, Box It, Watch This, Devado, uh, tell us about this. Now, I've heard, um, I don't know exactly the specifics around this, but I've heard like kind of like a few things here and there. But tell us about Behind Her Eyes, which is a show on Netflix. Yeah, Behind Her Eyes is a, a show that I was recommended uh, to by uh, Alice. And, uh, oh my gosh, uh, this is a, it's a decent show. I mean, I'm going to sit here and say it's the best show on earth, but it's a good show. Five episodes on Netflix. And it's about a, it's about relationships. It's about a, uh, a young lady. Uh, she's got a son. Uh, she's been out of the game for a while. Uh, no, six episodes, sorry. Uh, she's, she's been out of the game for a while. So she goes on a date. Uh, and with this, well, she, no, she goes to meet her friend in the bar. The, friend doesn't show up so she bumps into this guy you know tall dark and handsome kind of thing and they hit it off but it turns out he's married and oh. yeah so they don't see each other again but they bump into each other in i'm not going to say i don't, don't want to spoil it but they bump into each other again and it's like weird like what is going on uh and then it's a bit like a yeah it's just a bit of one a, of them's a stalker no it's not that but it's just like the uh obviously she's around him he's around her They've they've had a bit of a connection on this sort of date. Uh, he's married, so, so his wife is around, and it just like it just goes down a massive rabbit hole. Uh, obviously, the dynamic between the three of them is there, but also, also there's another dynamic. There's a few more dynamics actually. Oh, it, it does dip into the sort of supernatural realm. I don't want to spoil it too it? much, but yeah, it comes out of the blue a little bit. So I'm, I, I thought a bit, hmm, what's this about? <laughs> but it's just a bit, yeah, but there's a really, really good twist. Really, really good twist worth, worth sticking, sticking around for. But it's only One short. One of them's a episodes. ghost. No, it's not. No, 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 it's not ghost. But it's, uh, yeah, it's just a bit, yeah. It's a bit, it's a bit mad. And also the twist is actually, when I say the supernatural, is it kind of, think of Doctor Strange as well. It's a little bit linked to how he manoeuvres different realms and stuff like that it's a bit mad yeah a bit mad but it's, it's interesting oh, intriguing interesting yeah but, all right uh, well listen show. if there's any of our listeners who've seen this get in touch with us let us know what you think is it worth a watch uh i might have to put it on my watch list the time has come for us to do a quick recap well tria we're trying to do a quick recap but um la on last week's show we totally forgot to do a recap of episode number um six and uh, sorry episode number seven of one division but let's just get down to the nitty gritty of Wonder Vision Devaldo. So first things first, <laughs> three words. Oh my God! And mm -hmm. uh, number two, we now know who Agnes is. So listen, if you haven't seen uh, Wonder Vision, oh my gosh, you don't know what you're missing. So you might want to switch off or fast forward for a little bit. But listen, so um, Agnes, she's Agatha Harkness. She is another kind of like powerful witch and Devaldo episode number eight it started off in 1693 uh, in the year 1693 in Salem there's kind of like this little cov uh, you know coven of witches they they kind of like you know they tying her up and they're using their powers and she just deals with, she dealt with her own mum yeah <laughs> She, t she dealt with her own mum, man. What is up with that? So is she, because in the comic books, um, she's not evil, is she, in, in the comics? She's kind of, she acts as a mentor to um, the Scarlet Witch. But here, I don't know if she's evil or what, you know, what, what's going on? What's the dynamic? You mean Agatha Harkness, yeah? Yeah, Agatha Harkness, oh, yeah. yeah. She's bona fide, yeah. She's bona fide evil. Yeah, shit. she's uh, she's been through some shit in the past. And I think she's dipped into uh, some uh, some of the art some of the dark arts, uh, which might dip into Doctor Strange's realm as well. She uh, kind of has, she does something that a lot of these sorcerers do, like Doctor Strange and people like that. They use powers that don't belong to them and they are able to draw upon different spells and, and powers from beings from different realms. So we saw in, uh, oh, we saw, we saw in, in, in Doctor Strange, not Doctor Strange, we saw in Infinity War, when Doctor Strange was fighting uh, Thanos and he, he kind of uh, had those, you know, those big bands that he wrapped around Thanos' hands. Yes. And, like those are the crimson bands of Citrax and that's from a, what? That's from a different realm. Yeah. And even, <laughs> even the Juggernaut, you know, the Juggernaut, uh, I think uh, the Juggernaut also uses, is it Citrax? Is it? Uh, as well. I think so. The, the Juggernaut's power isn't his own. It's, it's, it comes from a different dimension. 
uh, and even like the Eye of Agamotto on Doctor Strange's, you know, he's on, on the necklace, which is the time the stone. Yeah. Agamotto is a real thing. Agamotto is one of the sort of, there's four or five supreme beings that are, that dwell in different, uh, you know, different realms and they have their own power and these sorcerers kind of dip into a bit of their power when they use it. So I think she also like studies those arts and uh, so it'd be interesting to find out a bit more about what she was talking about because she said that, you know, they said to her at the beginning of the episode, like her coven said to her, to Agnes, that you've been doing, you know, some the wrong magic. And she said, no, dark I bent magic. the rules. Yeah, she said, no, I bent the rules myself. And I think she, that's what she was doing. Yeah, she was stealing from the cookie jar. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> you know what? There's a spell or... Uh, uh, she does something with um, WandaVision with uh, Scarlet Witch's hair and then using a strand of her hair it helps her to kind of like open up another portal and you know what Doctor Strange did that with Thor yes in um, yes in Thor Ragnarok, I think it was, or, or, or something. So there's kind of like similarities over there. But listen, yeah. um, just to kind of recap, Agatha Harkness, she's the one who's been behind the whole thing. Like, for example, messing around, well, she sent over Pietro. We still don't know the whole yeah. thing with Pietro, who Pietro is, but she's kind of conjured him up or something. And yeah, um, he's just a hologram. He was never he was never real or anything yeah. like that. It was just a hologram. And I think they just played around with the fact that it was the foxes. Foxes. Uh, um, Quicksilver. Yeah. As in like the yeah. X-Men Quicksilver, uh, they just played around with that just because they could and it was the right time to sort of, you know, tease people about that. But uh, yeah, that was really good. Yeah. And um, we, we got, obviously got to see Monica Rambeau. She's back in uh, the, the hex again. We know that she's got her powers. I love that bit where, man, she was trying to break through. She was trying to breach through the hex and everything. And then she kind of finds this moment of clarity. You see kind of images of her mum and everything. And then she's like, I can do it. And then woof, she's in. And you know that she's obviously gone through some transformation. So there's going to be a showdown of some sort. You know, uh, WandaVision, uh, uh, Monica Rambeau. Maybe they team up to kind of take out Agatha Harkness. We still don't know what's happening with the kids. Like, you know, it, do, do we still know about Mephisto or Nightmare? Is there some sort of, you know, connection over there? Or is Agatha, Agatha Harkness going to be the main villain that they have to kind of mm. deal with? And then also, uh, we know that uh, the... the t tell me you... The whole thing about the mid credit scene, did you see them from last week's and this week's? Uh, yes, I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, and the whole mid credit scene thing, people were, and this makes total sense. You know, in episodes one to uh, one to six, there were no mid credit scenes. And I remember when I watched the first couple of episodes, I forwarded it to see kind of like, oh, are there any extras? They were <laughs> set in, remember, they were set in. Um, time periods where Marvel hadn't even introduced that. So when it got to the 2010s or whatever it was, that's ah. when Marvel started using mid credit scenes. So then they introduced the mid credit scene. I thought that was all brilliant. So we know that kind of Monica Rambo is there. And now we've got another vision who's there. There is a connection there with the comics because, um, uh, you you got to go online and you got to kind of like read up on the, this whole thing with the, the white vision. Who's kind of, he hasn't got any personality. So I'm sure there's going to be like a, a fight between Vision and Vision. You know, um, Wonder Visions <laughs> is um, uh, her version of Vision and then this, the real v Vision, but who doesn't, won't have any versions of, of Vision of and Visions of Versions. <laughs> exactly, man. <laughs> it is wicked. And um, shit, man, it's the last episode. Can you believe it? Oh. I hope they can tie oh. everything in. I hope there's going to be a cameo from like, you know, Doctor Strange in there or somewhere. Yeah. But man, seriously, and I hope they do what it, the episodes, man, sometimes the episodes are like over so quickly. I'm like, please make this like a 45 minute episode or something. Yeah. And she actually called her the Scarlet Witch for the first yes. time ever in the MCU. That was yes. big. So I think that's when we're going to see her fully become her true self. So far, she's been, you know, just bit, bit by bit. She hasn't really, you know, assumed her full role and her full power. So, yeah, when she turns into the Scarlet Witch, whew, that's going to be serious. man. Yeah. And, yeah, and we get flashbacks. And just to kind of quickly add on this, we get kind of flashbacks of when um, Wanda Maximoff was kind of, when she was doing the experiments with um, with Hydra and everything. So yeah. she, she, so what now what they're saying is that she had power when she was yeah. a young kid. And then the power stone or the mind stone, whatever it was, it kind of amplified her powers. And then remember yeah. she sees that vision. There's a little kind of, 
the floating lady. Yeah. Her. It's her. Yeah. Oh, my As the man. Scarlet Witch in, in costume. So, yeah. Exactly. And then uh, Agatha Harkness, she says, um, she uses the phrase chaos magic. Mm-hmm. And that's going to be big. So, listen, folks, listen, that's all we're going to say about it. Uh, and when the whole show's over, we can kind of do a deeper dive and uh, we can speak about all the little bits and pieces, but go out and watch it. And um, yeah, let us know what you think. If you have been watching it, has it been living up to your expectation? Uh, if so, let us know. If not, again, let us know. All right, new on streaming and some trailers. Now, Devaldo, uh, tell us about Snowfall. Yeah, Snowfall, really, really good show. I started watching this last, hmm, when was it? Last year, July. So July 2020, I think it was. And it, uh, it stars Damson Idris, is a UK, yeah. London uh, actor, but he, he seems like an American, a fully fledged American from LA in this series. It's uh, set in the 80s, uh, sort of 80s. I think it sort of dips into the 90s maybe, but it's about the sort of uh, the drug uh, uh, epidemic, pandemic, whatever you want to call it, in America, uh, sort of drug dealing and gangsters, you know, and law enforcement and uh, and people really in that sort of LA uh, backdrop. So yeah, really, really interesting to see seeing this young man uh, sort of living in uh, tough circumstances and he wants to, you know, he wants it. He wants it all, and he somehow builds an empire, and uh, yeah, it becomes uh, very, very serious. Uh, lots of gangster shit going on there, but it's a really, really good show. It kind of yeah. reminds me a little bit of The Wire. Yeah, uh, yeah. So yeah, it's actually really good. So interesting. There, Snowfall season four just started, so you can catch that on Fox. Exactly. Yeah, I've heard loads of good stuff about that one. I definitely got to start watching it. Uh, next one. Now, um, we I think we've spoken about this a little bit on the show. We we kind of mentioned this on the movie news that Zack Snyder was going to be working on a new movie. Uh, the new movie is going to be coming out on Netflix and it's called Zack Snyder's Army of the Dead. And so, Deval, tell us about this. This is the trailer, right? Yeah, the trailer just dropped. And thanks to Zakharov for letting us know about that one. Uh, but yeah, this one looks interesting. I mean... First of all, why why must it be called Zack Schneider's? I know. <laughs> he wants his name on he wants his name on everything. Everything because it's Zack Schneider's Justice League, isn't it? As well. Yeah, Justice. <laughs> Maybe that's in his contract. But yeah, directed by him, written by him, and also Shay Hatton uh, stars Batista. Again, we mentioned yep. him earlier on. It stars Hiro, Hiroyaki uh, Sanada, uh, who's been in uh, many different films in the past, The Wolverine. Uh, Sunshine, really good film from 2007. He was in yeah. Endgame as well, Westworld. Uh, but yeah, also, uh, who else is in? Uh, I think, what's his name? One from Power, Amari Hard Hardwick. Right. Okay. He's in this as well. So yeah, interesting film. But yeah, about zombies, really. I mean, <laughs> that's what it is. Zombies in Las Vegas, an outbreak. And all these mercenaries try to uh, deal with the matter. So yeah, that's what it's about. But yeah, it looks interesting. It's going to have a bit of, you know, comedy, action, horror, all thrown into one. So yeah, when this comes out, so when's it coming out again? It's coming out in May. I May. Think. Yeah, I think on, uh, I'm not sure if it's going to be on HBO Max, but yeah, it's coming out in May. So sometime then you'll catch it. Looking good. I want, definitely want to watch that one. Let's speak about this next one. This is, uh, what is this one again? Um, yeah, Invincible. I kind of mentioned it at the start of the show. This is a adult animation on that's coming out on Amazon Prime on March the 12th. So in a in, in, in couple of weeks time. But check the cast list for this one, man. Oh my gosh, man. This is, Ooh. first of all, it's written by Robert Kirkman. Robert Kirkman, talk, you know, you just mentioned uh, zombies. He was the person behind... Walking Dead. Walking Dead. He's behind mm. The Walking Dead. So he's kind of also created this whole other superhero world. And um, Invincible, it follows the story of Mark Grayson, whose voice, so this is an adult animation, voiced by Steve, talking about um, The Walking Dead, voiced by Stephen Yun. And the cast list for this man, oh He was my. in The Walking Dead. He was Glenn. Yeah, he was Glenn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And not only that, uh, who was, was it Lauren Cohen he, who played his girlfriend? Yeah. She's in this. You've got... Um, J.K. Simmons is in it. What? J.K. Simmons plays his dad in J. this. Jonah plays, Jameson. Sandra that's it. O. Sandra Rogen, O. Zazie Beats. Hold on. 
Luke Skywalker's in this. Mark I Hamill. Know. I know the cast <laughs> Seth Rogen is in this Walton Goggins oh my gosh they've got like a huge huge cast list in this and um, and basically what it is oh. is um, Stephen Yun he plays this guy called um, uh, Grayson Maharshala uh, Ali Marshall's Ali, Ali's what? in this as well. Yeah, so he plays kind of like this this guy called Mark Grayson. He's seventy years old. He's like every other kid for seventy years old, except that his dad is the most powerful superhero in the universe. His dad is called Omni Man, and that and that's played by uh, J, J. K. Simmons. So the story is about his coming of age, and it's about Stephen Yun's character. You know, uh, Grayson. He's got to basically find himself and find his powers, and um, it's violent. It's uh, it's bloody. It's you know it's an adult animation, and you know what? It looks really interesting, man. It's like um, episodes, six wait. episodes, I think. I cannot wait for this. This is on Amazon as well, so I'm gonna I'm I'm ready for this. I am ready for this. Oh, the cast man, list is this really is going to be man. great. Because it's got a lot of the, the sort of Walking Dead people in there as well. Walking Dead, lot. Lenny James is in there. You have got John Hamm. You got Jimon Honsu. Yes. Oh, my gosh, you got everyone in this. Him, so check out the trailer if you love your superhero stuff uh, and obviously it doesn't have to be always have to be live action animation man i've always i'm a huge fan mm. of animation and um, some of the best stuff out there is on animation uh just yep. just talk, thinking about x-men and uh, i think this is going to be really good as well so yeah great voice cast check out the trailer it's coming out in march so in about a couple of weeks two three weeks time on amazon yep. prime so go check it out and devour yes Thank let's you. move on yeah so now we've got anniversary corner guys so this is the section where we Sort of talk about five uh, films, just to highlight really, five films that have been uh, released from 10 years ago up to 30 years ago, uh, just to give you a bit of a reminder that these films are out there and, you know, that we're all getting older actually as well. So <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know exactly. All right, now let's do this one now. So the first one, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Now this is a, this is a remake of the, yeah. is it, I want to say sweet, is it Danish or Swedish? I think it's Swedish. Swedish. All right. Okay. So the yeah. sweet. So those are based. I think this Stieg Stieg Larsson. I've, re I've read a couple yeah. of them, and um, yeah. So the Danish one, Swedish ones. They're like you know really good. And this is the kind of I think it's David Fincher. He directed this, and it stars Daniel Craig, and it stars Runa Mari. Is it Runa Mari? No. Uh, uh, Rooney Mara. Rooney Mara. That's it. Rooney Mara. Daniel Craig. Numi Rap Rapace. And. Um, yeah, Numi Rapace, is she in? No, she can't be in this one as well, is she? I think she was in the, I know she was in the original Swedish one, wasn't she? But it kind of does say, I think she has a small part in this one, because it does say that she's in, included in this one. But I, I don't remember seeing her in it, but obviously she must have been in it. But yeah, it's a deep, it's a deep film. Deep. It's uh, about a journalist called, uh, is she a journalist? No, she's a hacker, sorry. She's, she's a, a hacker. hacker, yeah, she's a yeah, hacker. Yeah, Elizabeth Salander. That's it. And, uh, but yes, yeah, about a, a journalist, uh, Michael Blomfist, who's uh, aided in his search for a woman who's been missing for 40 years. Yeah. So Elizabeth uh, Salander helps uh, him to find out the secret of where she is. And this is about, you know, cover ups and murder, all that kind of stuff. But it's interesting, really interesting. This yeah. is uh, good roles as well. Bond is in it. And uh, yeah, interesting. Interesting uh, and film. And remember they did a reboot, kind of like a bit of a reboot or a refresh to it yeah. and it had the other British actress in it. I can't remember what her name is now. Yeah, she was the one that was in uh, Unsane and That's also it. in, uh, she was in the the, 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 the the Royal Family show on Netflix. What's it called again? Uh, um, the Crown. The Crown, yeah. Her name will come to me. Kate, Sarah, is it Kate or Sarah something? Yes, oh, one of those... <laughs> <laughs> we will remember we will remember they will remember all right okay uh next movie perfume the story of a killer now um this has got a british actor claire in foy, there as well it, sorry just had to shout it out claire what was it foy, what? that's her name claire foy that is it yeah. and um yeah so this next one called perfume the story of a killer this is 15 years ago 2006 and i remember when the chatter about this movie was because this is based on a novel it's based on a book and um the uh, the weird thing is this movie everyone spoke about this movie saying that this movie is unfilmable because there's a scene in the movie where the the kind of um the one, the main character he he kind of um uses perfume and everyone gets so kind of hooked on the 
on the perfume where everyone starts taking their clothes off and they start kind of like, I can't remember exactly what it was, right? And they said a that that was- A big or something. That, yes, an orgy, that's it, yeah. And they said that this move, this book is unfilmable. Well, but they, they made a film into it. And um, it stars the Ben Wishaw, who's, uh, you, you mentioned Bond before, he plays the new Q, yep. you know, uh, the new Bond movies. But yeah, Alan Rickman, Dustin Hoffman, um, a few other people that I haven't kind of seen of. But yeah, I mean- um, I, you know what? I haven't seen the movie develop. I saw it years ago, actually. I, you know, I love my crime kind of serial killer yeah. kind of movies and stuff like that. And in this one, he yeah, he's uh, he's disturbed, but he also, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, he has uh, talents. He has uh, superior senses, uh, and yeah, he's just a bit of a dark. Any he'll do anything to find the right sense, basically. Uh, but yeah, a bit of a dark bit of a dark movie here but uh yeah. at least it smells good at least it smells good all right and if you're looking for a darker movie now this mm. character um really great character this movie 20 years ago hannibal yeah so this is kind of like you know the the story the, the main character hannibal lecter from um is it manhunter i think it was the original um yeah oh, yeah yeah, ha- yeah hannibal lecter movie and then there was silence of the lambs based on silence of the lambs the novel they've kind of made a tv shows out of this they've made kind of like red dragon they've done reboots mm. remakes and there's there's a new um uh, a new tv show that's going to be coming out called clarice which is kind of based on the characters from that but yeah man hannibal you can't get kind of like a a more well-known uh, like serial killer than like on screen serial killer, right? Han- than Hannibal Lecter. Yeah, he's he's world renowned, and in this one, it's directed by Ridley Scott, which I actually didn't realize that stuff. Yeah, uh, but uh, yeah, he's living in exile, uh, and he uh, yeah, he's like obviously trying to keep a low profile. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, the FBI agent uh, Clarice Starling, who's now played by uh, Julianne Moore. Yeah, uh, she you knows she finds herself a target for him because he's still sort of infatuated by her, you know. And uh, yeah, obviously they connect, and you know people die, people are eaten. I think this is a scene where Ray Liotta, Ray Liotta in this one, and yeah, yeah Ray Liotta's in it eating his own brain, isn't it? It's mad. Yes, for, for the, the the dinner scene or something. Yeah, like, I can't yeah. So mad film, but yeah, worth a watch. Twenty years ago now, two thousand and one. Crazy, crazy. Uh, next movie, 25 years ago. This is Deep Crimson. Now, tell us about this one. Yeah, Deep Crimson uh, is a, it's a nice colour, isn't it? When you think of Deep Crimson. It's, uh, well, it's, it's actually a Spanish, uh, it's Spanish? It's Spanish uh, language. Uh, oh. Actually, it's Spanish, or am I getting it mixed up? No, yeah, it's uh, a Mexican, yeah, Mexican crime film. That's right, yeah. So this is the one, uh, it's the life of a man who preys on uns- unsuspecting women. Uh, uh, for yeah, that's what he does, and uh, and basically he has an accomplice who is actually also a woman who actually loves him, and they actually have a relationship in like in amongst what they're doing, you know, preying on other women, and uh, it's set in the nineteen forties Mexico, yeah, and uh, actually yeah, it's from a I believe it's from a novel. Uh, and it, it was, I think it may actually stem from real life occurrences as well, uh, about a couple who actually went around doing this. And it's quite unique because these sorts of situations, I mean, they do happen, unfortunately, yeah. most of the time it is men preying on women, but you hardly ever, uh, you know, find situations where, you know, it's, uh, it's two people, you know, mm. a couple doing it, you know, so, uh, it's a bit of a strange one but like i said these things sometimes happen but yeah that's a strange one for you to watch i think we've had this conversation before and like you know we you know there is a fascination behind why people do it and in england we there was a huge case to fred uh, fred west yes, and yes, uh, yes, mary yes. west like you know the kind of those two like sickos a yes. couple and they were um they were behind some of the most brutal murders, like in, yeah. like in British history. Like you know, yeah. they that they called it the uh, Fred and West, uh, Fred and Mary West, like House of Horrors. I think they called it or some something like that. Yeah, uh, some truly shocking stuff. Okay, so um, those, those are your anniversary corner movies. Maybe you've seen some of them, and uh, if you have seen them, let us know what you think. And um, one they last kind one. of tight. Oh, last sorry. One sneak in. Nineteen ninety-one. Sorry. Just real yes. quickly. 
Silence of the Lambs. And even just as we were talking about Deep Crimson, there's a, there's a hidden gem that I'm gonna, I want to quick, quickly mention today because it's so linked to that. But just quickly, in the year 1991, uh, Silence of the Lambs. Uh, obviously, I mean, we just had Hannibal on there, so we had to have Silence of the Lambs. Clarice Starling, 1991, the, the, the Buffalo Bills the killer, trying to use Hannibal Lecter to find another killer. The, 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 you know, sometimes they say, fight fire with fire. You want to yes. catch a monster, use a monster. Yep. And this film's a good example of that. Did it win an Oscar as well, didn't it? Uh, yeah, it yeah, did won an Oscar. It's got like 96% on uh, uh, Rotten Tomatoes, 86 on IMDb. This is kind of like the high benchmark for these kind of like, you know, crime stories. And I mean, it's based on a book and that book was really, really kind of like well-received yeah. and, you know, r- rich characters, deep characters. And, um, you know, Hannibal Lecter, that story is still going on. Like Clarice Starling, that mm. character is still going on. Like I mentioned before, we're going to see her on a TV show. So, yeah, you know, they, they endure those characters and people love reading about these types of stories. If you haven't seen that movie, go check it out. It's really great. And yeah. it, I, I think it brought um, like worldwide fame to um, uh, Anthony Hopkins. Yeah, yeah. So uh, go check those movies out. And uh, yeah, those are your anniversary recording movies. Now, they tie into the, one of the movies that we're going to speak about, which is uh, The Little Things, which is a, you know, the new movie f- from uh, Denzel Washington, Rami Malek, and uh, Jared Leto, directed by um, uh, John, is it John Lee Hancock, I want to say? God. That's correct. Yeah, John Lee yeah, Hancock. John Lee ha- yeah, John Lee Hancock, who's kind of been behind um, uh, some other crime movies. Um, the Highwaymen. Uh, people keep mentioning mm. this movie about The Highwaymen. I haven't seen it. It's on Netflix and he was behind that one as well. But um, yeah, so this is the new Denzel Washington movie kind of released in cinemas, released on HBO Max. Denzel Washington, he plays kind of like a county sheriff police officer who's called back to Los Angeles in the, in the this is set in the 1990s. And uh, he's, he's, you know, trying to find some evidence or something. And um, he gets kind of sucked into this murder investigation that's going on, uh, which is being led by Rami Malek's character, who's this kind of young, you know, hotshot, uh, you know, detective. You know, he's working the cases. There's a string of murders that are going on. And Rami Malek's character wants to find this killer. And Denzel Washington, he used to be you know, on the force in Los Angeles. And, you know, he, as the story unfolds, he kind of starts lending his hand to Rami Malek. And then these two, they join up to try and catch this killer. And, um, yeah, so then, you know, we've got this third character played by Jared Leto. And this whole idea pops up, like, is he or isn't he the killer? You know, the way that the story's been written, you know, that there's clues you know, you know, littered throughout the movie and in the dialogue and what's being said. And I was just reading an interview from the director. The director wrote this story back in 1994, Deval. So he's, yes, he's been sitting on this story for such a long time. And from what I kind of read of the interview, he was like, he wanted to, uh, he wanted to leave the movie kind of like, you know, ambiguous. He didn't want to kind of leave, um, you know, he, he left breadcrumbs, but he didn't want there to be kind of like a, a, a black and white answer, you know, of this is kind of like, you know, the killer or this isn't the killer. And, you know, he left it up to the audience. And um, when I watched the movie, uh, and obviously this isn't kind of giving anything away, but yeah, I was scratching my head a little bit because I was figuring stuff out and trying to piece together you know, what's going on, you know, the movie's called The Little Things, but I think there are some big things that they kind of left out and that they should have kind of, you know, (laughs) maybe kind of uh, explored a bit more. I thought Denzel Washington's performance was really, really good. You know, he does that thing with his eyes, Deval. Have you noticed it? When other characters are speaking and the way he looks Mm. at you, it's like, you know, he reacts on the inside and it's just so realistic and so believable the things that he does and um i thought he was actually great there's a few moments in there where the movie kind of just kind of lost me a bit where i kind of like maybe switched off and i was like shit what happened there and maybe i had to go, kind of go back a little bit in terms of kind of like up there with movies like science of the lamb seven um i don't think it hits those marks to, uh you know the, the, i don't think it hits the mark really you're right it doesn't for me i mean the, the, it, it kind of ends quite wrongly i think but also ends in a way that you never expect which is good yeah but you're right it doesn't it's not as gripping throughout uh i do think jared jared leto's character uh i don't know uh 
<laughs> you, I just no, don't exactly. Know, I know. It's a bit of a head scratcher. What was yeah, I mean, but maybe maybe, he should, one... maybe that's the way they should be. Maybe they shouldn't be stand out like looking like a serial killer. Maybe, you know, they should mm. be a bit, you know, ambiguous. So I don't know. Even uh what's his name's character? Rami Malik. I think he looks more like a serial killer than anyone. <laughs> he I don't did, know. He? He's got He's a certain so creepy. look about him. <laughs> <laughs> They, oh, all of them agree. Yeah. But listen, this. so basically what they've done is they kind of put together these three Oscar winners. So, th- you know, yeah, you're, yeah. you're getting great acting talent. Don't get me wrong. You're getting great acting talent. But I think there's something missing in the kind of the execution of the movie. And um, yeah. and then, you know, I kept thinking, I kept looking back at obviously Seven, like, you know, the way David Fincher and even Zodiac and even the way that those kind of movies are kind of constructed and the way that, they, you know, you... The, when the character, when the detectives in those movies are piecing the movie together, the audience is piecing it together as well. And I think this movie tried really hard to kind of capture that, but it kind of fails. And um, for me, the standout thing was the performance. I went online, and a lot of people are saying Denzel Washington's character is actually the serial killer. <laughs> ah, interesting. Yes, and there's kind of clues within the movie. That will kind of, uh, you know, make you, you know, that are pointed out and then, you know, that you kind of think, oh shit, actually maybe, you know, he could be, he could it be, who knows. But I think the the director, the writer of the movie, uh, Hancock has kind of like, you know, purposefully, you know, made the movie out to be, you know, ambiguous. So we don't know who is, and you're just left with kind of some doubt. One other thing that I will say is Denzel Washington, he always plays characters where there's kind of a bit of a grey character. If you go back to Inside Man, if you go back to Unstoppable, if you go back to uh, The Taking of Pelham 123, he plays these characters where there's kind of a kind of like a shady past to, to him. And um and I like the fact that he's attracted to those roles because no one is just black and white. You know, there's yeah, he true. plays a police officer, but he's got a kind of bit of a a bit of a dark past in in this movie and in other movies that he's played as well. There's always something a bit grey about that, and uh, and I guess you know that you know we we're not we're all grey somewhere, aren't we? There's no black and white in all of us, so uh, that that bit was interesting. But yeah, you know, um, I don't know. It's <laughs> You know, it's it's, <laughs> it's all right. It's, it's all right. right. Basically, it's all, it's right. all right. Yeah, it's just, it's worth a watch. Still, uh, entertaining. Uh, not the not the best, I'd say, but it's still entertaining. It's still worth a watch, I'd say. But uh, yeah, give it a go. I'll, I'll probably give it a six point five. Absolutely, uh, maybe a seven Me out too. of stretch, but probably six point five. Already. Yeah. I'm hovering on the six on this one, but yeah, man, yeah. yeah. But yeah, go check it out. It's called The Little Things. And Devado, yeah, tell us about yeah. this next movie. I'm going to quickly whiz past this one because I want to talk a little bit more about Hounds of Love. Sure. Uh, but yeah, Monster Hunter, Mila Jojovic, and uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, W.S. Anderson, I think his name is. Uh, they, all, they made all the, uh, the Resident Evil films. Uh, so yeah, Mila Jojovic returns again to make another monster. Paul W.S. Anderson, that's his name. He also actually made uh, Resi- uh, not Resident Evil. He made Mortal Kombat. <laughs> <laughs> in 95 and also uh event horizon which is actually a great film but uh this film do you know what all i can say about this film it's fun yeah but it's not a deep film it's, a, it's based on a computer game it's based on a video game from capcom of the same name monster hunter where they go around uh with big swords you know slashing monsters from different realms and stuff like that uh with you know a bit of superpowers as well it's kind of like, it kind of reminds you of like, you know, those sort of Devil May Cry kind of games, but just not so demonic. Uh, Mila Jojovic, uh, Tony uh, Jar, Ron Perlman's in this, T.I.'s in this, Megan Good is in this. Uh, so yeah, that's the sort of cast that we've got going on there. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's entertaining, but you know what? It's not deep. But if you want an entertaining film to watch, just to relax, give it a go, Monster Hunter. Uh, that's all I can really say, you know, it's not, it's not yeah, it's, it's, just, it's just okay, but... A lot of green screen and you can tell is it okay yeah you know but yeah, yeah that's it <laughs> that's all i can say all right so moving okay. swiftly on <laughs> yeah so yeah the reason why i wanted to mention my hounds of love real quickly is because we talked about uh some of these sort of crime films where you know people go around uh sort of you know predators being predators and uh, you know lurking on people and and killing and stuff like that just like in uh in the little things and this one's called hounds of love 2016 Australian film based on true events. Ooh. And this film about a young girl 
uh, she's a high school girl and uh, she's, uh, she lives with her, her mom. Her parents are separated, but she's going out one day and she gets, uh, she's, she's walking down the street, going to a, uh, like a house party and a couple, uh, you know, drive up, drive past her, offer her a lift and actually offer her, you know, sell some drugs. She accepts, unfortunately, and they take her to her house, to their house. And she sees a, a child seat in the back thinking, okay, they've got kids, you know, it's safe. Plus yeah. it's a man and a woman, you know, a couple, she thinks it's safe. They take her to the house and that's where it all goes, you know, all goes crazy. So yeah, they, they eventually, you know, strap her to the bed and all that kind of stuff. And she's just, yeah, she's not leaving basically. Her parents are looking for her. Uh, you know, the police aren't really doing that much because there will be enough couple of days or whatever it might be. But then, you know, more days turn into more days. And it is a bit of a sick film, the things that they do to her. And they're a couple, you know, it's just, it's crazy. Obviously, anyone shouldn't do this. But when you see a couple doing it, especially when you see a woman involved as well with the man and the man's doing things to her, you know, it's like, you think it's a bit mad. I know I'm not, I'm not condoning any of it. I'm not saying, you know, She's wrong for being a woman and, and letting it happen. Either way, it shouldn't happen. The man shouldn't do it. But it's just, and then you see the the person, the, the girl that they've captured, she tries to connect with the woman because obviously they're both women and, you know, she's trying to connect with her on a, on a, on a sort of woman to woman level to say like, you know, stop this, stop this. It's a deep film, really good film, actually. I really enjoyed it in just the dynamic of the relationships and how she, she's really clever, the, the, the girl. But she does send out a message. I'm not going to say how, but she sends out a message and it's really clever how she sends it out. Yeah, really, really clever. Uh, but this is about an hour and 40 minutes, this is. Uh, you can find this on Rakuten. And uh, this week's prize, if you can uh, just give us one of your hidden gems this week, uh, then we'll send you out a Rakuten movie code so you can rent film of your choice from, from Rakuten. Yeah, good streaming service uh, where you can find a lot of hidden gems. So, uh, yeah, that's it. Pounds of love. Quite interesting. Yeah. I'm going to make a note of that one. That sounds really, really good. All right. Well, listen, folks, there you have it. That is the show for you. We hope you enjoyed it. Like I've said before, like Deval's mentioned before, get in touch with us, win that Rakuten code, and you can be watching a movie of your choice this week uh, or this weekend. Who knows? And um, yeah, so um, if there's any kind of movies that you want us to speak about, then please, again, get in touch with us. We'd love to hear your recommendations. People like Zakharov, people like uh, O'Shea PD, you know, people that, you know, they get in touch with us, telling us about movies, etc. So uh, we love that. And uh, Deval, it's been great talking to you, mate. And um, yeah, we're going to do this again. Yep, defo. Peace out, guys. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube and Twitter. Just pop in the Flicksters podcast.